Steve, good to be here at DMG Mori today. Uh, it, we, as a newsworthy channel, it's always good to get uh, in, you know, insights into how last year was 2017. From your perspective, how was business for DMG Mori? Business was good. Uh, at the beginning of the year, I predicted it was going to be a tough year. That wasn't very difficult to predict. I think the political uncertainty is still causing a problem today, but certainly caused issues last year. Um, we saw a, a huge spike in the business in quarter, back into quarter three and into quarter four. So quarter one and quarter two were, were fairly flat. Um, the demand on service is, is just unprecedented in respect to customers actually utilising their machines harder uh, and more, which is fine. That's what they're there for. Um, so we've seen markets change quite a bit. We hit our targets. We, were, we have various targets, not just about selling number of machines. Uh, we have KPIs within the group to make sure that we do perform. Um, some of those we struggled with, admittedly, but we had a good retention of staff last year. We've taken more people on and we've also employed more apprentices. So the growth for the company looks very good. Where, where was the spike? What were the trends? You talk about quarter three into quarter four. Well, I'm not really sure what promoted that, whether people just realised they've got to get on with business. You know, there are a lot of reports going around saying, let's get on with daily business. You know, the political situation will resolve itself eventually, one way or the other. Um, we've seen some of the bigger companies making more of a proactive move into the UK, supplying castings uh, which need machining and that kind of thing. Um, and I guess it was just a little bit of confidence coming back. The types of industry were again very, very diverse. So we were selling into a lot of small companies um, and a lot of larger companies. And probably that was an even split between OEM and subcontract. What about the technology side for you? Because that, that's always been a big driver for DMG, Mori. Innovation, new products. Were, were people embracing those in, in that spike? Yeah, more so particularly looking at the automation side of things, looking how to get the best out of the machine from um, an unattended point of view, perhaps uh, running at night and that kind of thing. So yes, that was an important issue for a lot of customers. Because you also have what used to be, and I'm not sure if it's still branded the same, but the Eco line or the Eco range. Uh, is that still a current model? No, the Eco range is not a current model. It's been completely redesigned, revamped. Uh, it's now the CLX for the turning and the CMX for the, for the milling. Um, it's come out from a joint design on a, a product that's come from Japan. Um, we've just recently installed um, eight of these machines into an automotive company running very high volume, very hard and aggressive machining, and they're really standing up to the, to the wear and tear that's required of them. And so this is really DMG Morris servicing both ends of the market, isn't it, from a, from a technology side, but also a, a, you know, when, when you're looking to maybe be cost competitive uh, in smaller to medium-sized companies? Absolutely. It's not just that as well, because you might find that one company needs a very straightforward, simple two- or three-axis machine, as well as to complement some of their more complex five-, six-, seven-axis machines. You know, I can't sit there as a supplier and say, well, I'll only sell you these ones and buy off somebody else. So DMG Mori offer a very, very wide range of products to really cater for most customers' requirements. And I mentioned innovation and you're always at the forefront. What, what is coming in 2018? I know you've got the open house in Fronten coming up. What, what will you be showing? Well, there's, uh, Fronten's important, but actually for me, Mac is more important. Uh, I, I find that a lot of UK companies don't travel or haven't got time to travel, but I think Mac will bring that on. Um, we're showing additive uh, in two versions, both powder bed and by laser deposition. Um, so we've got uh, quite a push on that kind of technology. Ultrasonic machining for machining hard materials and carbon fiber. So when you cut carbon fiber, it doesn't delaminate and gives you very clean edges. Um, we are also looking at quite a bit of automation on there as well showing customers how straightforward and simple it is to install automation for not necessarily high volume. It can be for low volume, high variety type applications. And do you see direct results from the Mac show? I mean, take 2016. Is there a, a, a figure you could quote that, um, yeah, that you came out with or what, what the result was? Yeah, Mac, Mac 2016 was exceptional for us. Um, we took a lot of orders. We actually took 65 orders on the stand. 65 machines were sold. Um, that is a combination of a lot of hard work before, during and after. But I think the important thing for Mac is also it's a platform for the sales team for the next two years until Mac 
2020. And uh, they can utilize the information that they've gathered from the customer in that period of time to actually secure and develop business. And what about the Industry 4 as well? This is always a, a case in point. For the last two or three years, it's been promoted by many machinery suppliers. Is it actually taking shape now? Are people adopting uh, this in the UK? Well, we see some companies that are very smart, very clever with, the, with it, and it's about collecting data. It's about collecting data right across the board, um, going into the depths of the machine tool for predictive maintenance. We will be showing that kind of technologies on the Mac stand um, with the, via the CLOS control that can handle all sorts of uh, requests for data coming in and out. And Steve Finn, what would you like to see uh, come the end of 2018 when you look back on the year? What would be classed as a success from your perspective and DMG Morris in the UK? Well, I would like to see UK manufacturing grow in the strength that it's growing at the moment. Uh, there's a bit of that for everybody in there. Um, I believe that DMG Mori has set its stall out to look not just to 2018, but for the next two or three decades coming. Um, so it's about continuity, about sustainability, um, about giving performance to the customers, um, enjoying our work. And don't read what all the newspapers say, because often it's, uh, right. it's not true. I'll start reading the newspapers. You know, you guys have a better way of reporting really good information and letting the smaller information get out to the wider field. So please carry on with that.